Time to shine today, varsity squad. It is Scott Ferguson, and I got like this is actually a, like a treat, a little blessing for me to have one of my really good friends, Steve Austin. And so, in some generation, Steve Austin is like the John three sixteen, uh, you know, guy from the WWE WWF days. And Steve Austin, for me, with my age, I guess I'm showing my age, coming up on fifty years old, is the six million dollar man. So. Um, I affectionately call my brother here, Steve Austin, the, the six mills. He's a six million dollar man. Uh, Steve is one of my go-to people uh, for preferred lenders for, you know, people that listen and know me know that I'm a residential real estate agent at 22 years. And I'm very picky about who I do my loans with just because of feedback and follow up and whatnot. And Steve is just the epitome of awesome with that. So I couldn't wait to get this interview in. Uh, this is a guy we have lunch probably once a month. We have a couple deals in process now together. But I really wanted to get out here because he has a unique story. You know, he's a, a bona fide football star here in the football factory area of South Florida. I mean, you look and see who's playing in the league under the shield. There's a lot of people that Steve actually went to school with, either in the same school as a factory to, that, that put them into uh, colleges and into the NFL. And he's born, Steve was born and raised in Palm Beach County, Florida. He grew up playing football through college, was fortunate to find his way into the mortgage industry. Um, a few years after college, he's been able to use the skills and disciplines he learned playing football and other sports to build a strong foundation and to help other people level up into a very emotional time of buying a house. And Steve's a pretty laid back cat, but he can get aggressive when he needs to, to make sure the clients are taken care of. So Steve, welcome to the show, brother. I'm gonna have you come on and introduce yourself to the varsity squad. But first, what mode do you use the most when you text? Oh, emoji I use the most. It's probably the uh, just fist up. Fist, just up, fist up, baby. Up. Love oh, it. Usually into a response like solid. We're good. Solid. We're good. We're good. That's awesome. When I get the clear to close fist up, that's fantastic. What's that's your favorite right. color, man? I'm big blue guy, as blue. you can see. Uh, yes, we're both rocking a little bit of the blue. Uh, hey, fantastic, you know, man. Blue yeah. eyes. It helps accent it. So <laughs> it's in his color ashamed. wheel. It's in I'm his not color ashamed. wheel. Help pull them out. <laughs> love it, love it. So, Steve, man, seriously, dude, welcome to the show, bro, and thanks for coming awesome on. To be here, man. Appreciate yeah. It. So, let's get into this origins, man. Back from you know, kind of being the you know athlete that you were at the a very high level, and then going to college and kind of bring it into starting the dynamic lending group. Yeah. So, um, like you know, a lot of, of my fellow brothers here in South Florida, we get involved into our sports early and, and often, and it's a, definitely a go all in type of, type of atmosphere where you're, you're putting all your effort in and doing everything you can to be on the field because there's a lot of good players down here. Um, I said I was very fortunate to have a solid career, and I played with a lot of great guys that are still playing today. And, um, you know, I kind of always took that competitive nature of like, well, there's specific things you need to do to work hard and, and get on the field and academically, physically. Okay, I need to do these things. Let's let's get up and go. I was never one to want to be on the bench or watching from the sidelines. So I definitely want to be in the mix with everybody. Um, fortunate to have a bit of athletic ability behind it that helped me achieve all that. Um, yeah, it was a good run. Had a great time. My body's definitely happier that I'm not getting hit on Saturdays anymore. <laughs> um, and was, you know, like I said, fortunate to find my way into the mortgage industry and uh, be on this crazy journey for the last, uh, actually August was eight years since I've oh, been here at Group One. That's fantastic, man. Time flies. You, I've known you probably five, actually. I think it was yeah, in 2015 um, or maybe 16, but I think it actually was 15, I remember. Yeah, because yeah. uh, we worked at um, the hospital gig over there for yep. the, the heroes at the hospital. Cause Steve and I both have a heroes program that we give back to the local first responders, veterans, uh, teachers and whatnot, um, which is a huge heart for doing that. So Steve, you went to college. Did you graduate? I did. Okay. I did. So what did your family think that you went to college for a degree and you got into a business where you're thriving, not just surviving, you're thriving. And you really don't put your degree to work. What, what did the family and friends and people think about you going into the mortgage business, bro? Uh, well, honestly, there was a lot of support f from all that. I'm actually, since my grandfather was the first one in the family to go to college and graduate. Um, so that was kind of a, <clears throat> a big step for our family, not, not big in the family for everyone going to college as a whole. Um, 
I had a, you know, a business degree. My bachelor's is in business, but, you know, with a concentration and I think it was marketing. Honestly, I don't even really remember anymore. <laughs> um, but, you know, you take what you learn and the experiences and that, and, you know, some of it carries over, but I was, it was all football. That was why I was there. That's why I made it there. And those eggs were in that bag. You could not have told me when I was in college that I wasn't going to the NFL because that wasn't the mindset that you had if, if you were right. trying to make it. Sure. Um, so a lot of support from the family. It was great. You know, very fortunate to have a, a good relationship with the, the owners of Group One yeah. here. And one of the owners happens to be a, a family friend. So I happened to be playing on his flag football team at the time and was working in some family business, doing a little bit of IT staffing for a minute and just hadn't really found my groove after college and my football was over. I was like, Football's over. I don't even like anything else. What do you mean? <laughs> um, he was in the industry, had been in it for a long time. Um, kind of took me under his wing to to bring me in and mentor me and show me the ropes. And uh, I'm glad I, I took the step forward to give it a shot because looking back, I certainly had a lot of days where I was like, what am I doing? This, I don't, right. know, if this, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever make it. And uh, looking back now, making it through the ups and downs and you know, knock on wood, it's been a fortunate position and hoping to just keep growing. What'd you got, how, what did you do to get through the downs? Well, I mean, the biggest thing for me is I, I know things are hard and it, it's okay. I could kind of see the people around in the company that were doing well. And some of it was honestly like, man, if they can do it, wait, why can't I do it? You have that mentality already. You have a winner mentality. Yeah. And then fortunate to have a good support system with uh, my now wife and family of like, Hey man, just stay the course, push through, just keep getting up and working. And that's, I'm big on routine. I'm okay with the, with the grind. And I know that's what it takes. Anything worthwhile um, usually takes a long time and a lot of hard work to get. And I know the ones that are willing to push through are the ones that prosper. Love it. So what, what makes a great mortgage lender? I think it, it all starts out with relationship. You know, mortgages are mortgages. Rates are rates, cost are cost. I think you have to have a knowledge, obviously, of what programs and everything is. Being, being able to advise someone from start to finish, I think, is what the most important part is. That just throwing rates and costs and, hey, this is a program at somebody and saying, here you go, let's, let's move forward, isn't, it's not going to help anybody get through this. It's an in-depth process, especially in today's climate. Um, you know, letting someone know, hey, this is what you're going to expect from this pre-approval meeting to the day you're getting your keys at closing. And I find it that being able to build that relationship with somebody in the trust of I'm giving you my expert advice and, and, and how I see what best fits you as an individual for your loan scenario, not what you may have heard on uh, the TV of what interest rates and programs are. You know, Love everybody... It individual situation is, is their individual situation. And I think customizing and, and coming up with a game plan for each person individually is what's important. Love it. Where do you see the market right now? Cause it's uh, September 22nd, 2020, or is it on fire or what, what's going on in the market right now, brother? I think the market is absolutely on fire. Um, interest rates are still great. I think we're on a, a bit of a trajectory where we, we might see them go up slightly, nothing to where they're going to go bad. But, you know, I think if anybody who is looking for the rock bottom, we probably missed it. Um, right. But again, I think they're going to be okay moving forward. But I think it, it'll take a little time for someone to be like, ah, man, I hate to see a three when it could have been a two. Right, right. Um, but in reality, you can borrow a lot of money for 3%. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. It's um, basically free money. <laughs> right. 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 I think the housing market's doing great. I'm hearing a lot of multiple offers out there for buyers. I know some buyers are having a difficult time uh, getting some offers accepted if they're not getting them in quickly and sure. strong. Yeah, it's definitely a, a seller's market right now. I'm seeing from the real estate side. And um, like Steve said, you, you better get, if you like something, you better write right now. And especially where we live, I actually call it heaven's waiting room. I mean, people flock here. There's a mass exodus to South Florida. So, <laughs> you know, our prices are not going to be going down like maybe parts of the other United States is because the baby boomers are in their 70s. And they're like, they work their ass off up north to come live here for their twilight years. So I don't really see us taking a hit. What do you think? I, I would agree. And I think, 
you know, South Florida as a whole, and I especially say where we are in Palm Beach is a very a special place where a lot of people want to be sure. and uh, transplant that I think we have a real uh, solid housing market that I, I think is going to be fine moving forward. Love it. So when you're taking that 1003, that, that mortgage application, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do, the prospect client? Ooh, that never do. I don't know. People ask a lot of questions. I know, right? Uh, which <laughs> it's is always, good. Yeah, it's always rate, term, all oh, that other stuff. Right. But is there anything I else? Think, what I wish, because some people ask, but I think what some some people I think should be asking more is, is this the right loan for me? And in, in that, I mean, there's a lot of different options we can look at to keep people's down payments low, uh, mortgage insurance minimal, and to just say, I, I want an FHA loan. Because some most people usually come in with an idea of what they think they want or they what they sure. think may be best for them. But a lot of times you, you get into someone's situation and, hey, uh, I think I want an FHA loan. You pull their credit, credit's great. There's programs out there where you can do 3% down with conventional that you can be in a better financial position doing a conventional loan. So that's why I think it's, uh, you know, my position and, and other loan officers in, in that do this to be more of an advisor and let people know, hey, well, I know you came in here and, and thinking you want to talk about FHA, but let me give you the, here's FHA, we'll discuss those numbers. And now let me give you another scenario and why I think it's a better, a better one for you. Gotcha. Gotcha. What's the biggest pet peeve of being a loan officer? People not wanting to send their documents. <laughs> or how about when you're page three six. weeks? Page <laughs> six of the bank statement that says intentionally left blank. They're like, oh, you don't need that. <laughs> or, or how about the people that three weeks before closing, they go out and buy a couch on credit and yeah, a fridge I, and everything I can bring a couch over the car. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'll take the couch over the car. <laughs> so let, let's let's get in our DeLorean, Steve, with old Marty McFly, man. Let's go back to the 22-year-old, 23-year-old Steve Austin. Um, what what would you tell that Steve to maybe help him shorten his learning curve, level up, and blast through a little bit quicker? I think first thing to say would be you shut your ego up. You're you're not that great. You got a long way to go, and and learn to shut up and listen and, and swallow that ego a little bit. How kind hard like, is that for an athlete at the level that you played at? Hard. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's like, I've been at levels too, but it's like you, you, you had, that's what my, it took me into my thirties, man, to actually realize that and to lose everything in a way, <laughs> you know, yeah. to just got crushed. But I appreciate you saying that though. I mean, that's very transparent, man. I really appreciate it, bro. So, how do you want your dash remember that little line that you know Ray Lewis talks about it you know that little line between your incarnation date and your death date how do you want Steve's dash remember that's a great question I really think um the biggest thing for me at this point in my life and career is to you know to make a positive impact on people and I want you know if my name comes up to everyone's like ah like and they knew me, had some interactions that, you know, he was a good guy or if they, even if they didn't know me personally that I always heard good things about him. And, you know, I fortunately am in a position where I get to help a lot of people and meet a lot of people that I probably otherwise wouldn't um, and help them with the biggest, you know, milestone in their life for most people's cases. Yeah. And, right. uh, you know, being there as the resource and kind of friendly, just help through the entire process to where I have clients that, they'll have a plumbing problem four years later and to ah, Steve knows about how stuff I'm not a plumber, but I know plumbers. And like, I like to be that resource of like, it may not be Steve directly, but I know he's going to help me and willing to help out that uh, I can reach out to him. You know, I always want to, I want it to be that I, I've given more than I've, taken you're definitely a go-giver man positive impact is a perfect example of you and you know you're also a great resource i mean because you're local you grew up here so you probably are pretty ingrained with those connections with the plumbers and electricians and stuff i mean i know i've reached out to steve a couple times for recommendations and he was very quick with them so i appreciate that so steve what's something that uh the what's something that people might misunderstand about you the most I think I, I still have that. Uh, I can be, I can be a bit of a sarcastic guy. Uh, you think? <laughs> I, I don't even mean it. Some, sometimes I'm saying it before I even realize I'm like, oh, God, 
you maybe should have shut up on that one, but uh, from the football pass and it's things I'm always striving to get better with. And, you know, I'm never going to be done getting better or growing. Um, the ego always does pop its head up here and there. And some may think I come off maybe a little cocky sometimes. And I certainly never want it to be like that. And I do not think I'm better than anybody. Um, I tie it back to, you know, I've always had a, a sense of confidence in what I do that I'm always going to attack what I do with confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I've gotten. Some success. people might think that's arrogant, but it's really right. not because you're just, that's just how you're wired. But no, right. that's, that comes with age and it's came with you. I mean, in five years, I've seen it in you. You know what I'm saying? It's where you, you, the maturity of communication is it always is trust me dude when i was your age i was i was a dick you know what i'm saying <laughs> so and i still am but whatever uh, okay. but like what do you think that what what what's the gap that thing you figured out to translate your talents to other areas of your life like what about football made it easy to translate into mortgage bro like, the uh, the day-to-day -day disciplines and stuff you know i always had from you know, really from, from high school through college, because middle school was, you know, a lot more lax and before sure. that was laxed. But, uh, you know, high school to college, it was always very, hey, you you have to be at classes this time. You can't skip class because you got to play on the team and uh, you got to do assignments. You need to work out. You need to be here and there. And then to college, especially when you get there, when, you know, week one, they give you the, uh, you know, the printout of the calendar and 80 percent of it's blacked out. And they go, all right, pick your classes and everything around that, everything in black and practice and meetings. Um, wow. That's how, that's the way it worked. Yeah. They, you know, they, the precedent was, these are your meeting times. These are your workouts. This is practice. Pick your classes around it. You still have to take your, you know, at least 12 credits and you got to be there. Wow. And also get good grades because if you don't, you're not going to be on the team anyways. So wow. that's that, crazy. That for me, I've always been okay with, all right, I, I got to do it. Let's get up and go. So I've taken that into day one since I got into the mortgage industry of, hey, Steve, you got to do ABC to get someone pre-approved and a file in and get something to close and to get paid. It's like, okay, well, I better do ABC on each file. So that really grinded out the time management with everything that really transferred over into mortgage lending. Cause everything we're on a contract, we're on a timelines, right. you know, right. So that discipline really helped lock you that in. So For what's sure. the, what's the BIG, the big thing Steve wants to accomplish. I really want to grow out something special here with, with what I'm doing with the dynamic lending team. And uh, you know, group one's been an amazing company for me to plant myself and they have an amazing foundation and, and reputation in the, in the um, area. Yeah, they do. And, the opportunity that I have to build off the foundation to to build my own team and division to bring new loan officers in that I, I was completely green when I came into this mm -hmm. and you don't grow up thinking of being a loan officer there's nothing <laughs> besides insurance right? what's more boring than what it is. Um, so it's not that it's the mortgage industry but I've seen other people and now I've personally gotten to experience what this industry can do your life to change your life financially on, on, on many different levels how it can change your life and love it i think having a good operation in place where i can bring on young loan officers at where i was you know eight years ago and maybe not sure and probably more specifically with athletes you know i still have some ties with uh, my previous high the high school i went to dwyer mm -hmm. help some of those guys like hey here's an option right and I think, 100% all in. You want to go to the NFL, try it. But there's nothing wrong with seeing if you like something else as well. And it. hearing it from someone who's been through the battle and had all their eggs in one basket, and uh, then all of a sudden that basket's empty, and you're like, uh-oh. Right, right. Um, you know, I want to be a resource to build that out and really grow something special here in our area. Which you're well on your way. That's awesome. So, Steve, if you were to lose everything, right, what would be the first thing? business wise, if you lose everything business, what would be the first thing that you would do to rebuild? Okay. Uh, business wise would be because of the time I've put into this industry and I believe in this industry, I would pick my boots back up, um, start from square one. And that square one would be go talk to one person or right. one relationship on how you can work with someone in the industry to try to get some deals in. And it'd be, evaluating what went wrong why did it go wrong 
how can you adjust it to pivot to to bring success again? I love that, man. That's outside of business. It would be go try out for the XFL. I <laughs> go get it done, get it done. I love that. I love it. So, what's three things Steve can't live without? Can't live without. I would say the can't live without the the time that I I try to take for myself on a daily basis sure. as far as refocusing, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, because I don't feel like if I'm if I'm no good to me, I can't be any good to anybody else. Sure. My family, the time that I get to spend with them, sure. very that most of my family is here in the area. Um, my wife being involved in that. Oh, yeah. Gabby. Love Gabby. And probably the friends, being able to socialize and grow with friends, experience things with friends. Community, and right? Community. You know, going through COVID has certainly been hit more of a realization of that, how much it really yeah, <laughs> When it's taken away, of like, oh, you used to be able to, hey, do you guys want to go meet up somewhere? Yeah, sure, no problem. Right. And then, well, I don't know if you can, and maybe right. you should. And I feel you. A lot of silver lining in, in all of this. Love it. Love it, man. So what's your definition, then, Steve, of a life well lived? A life well lived. I think it's one where you can look back and feel like you've, you've – done your best to become the best version of yourself you can. Um, it's something I heard from Ed Milet um, that he believes, you know, once you cross over, whether you believe in God or wherever you think you go, that you're going you're gonna to get to meet your full potential self. Love it. And the idea is to always grow and pursue forward, progress forward, so that when that day comes and you meet that person, they're like spitting image of, of who you've become. That's awesome. That's deep, bro. That's yeah. solid. That's solid. So, Steve, as we wind things down here a little bit, we were going to do our leveling up lightning round, where you and I can talk, and we probably have talked 15, 20 minutes about each one of these questions, yeah. but they can be answered in five seconds, and that's what I want. Just answered, no explanations. You ready to rock? I'll do it. Let's do it. Let's level up. What's the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Just do it. Do it. Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Waking up early. Love it. Other than your website, dynamiclendingteam.com, and of course, time to shine today.com, my shameless plug. What's the website like you like to go to to level up? Lately, it's been a clockwork. Um, clockwork. Okay. By Mike. Oh God, I always butcher his last name. Um, anyways, he wrote the book Clockwork. Okay. And Love great, it. great book, great read on running your business like clockwork. Beautiful. So, not the book you're reading now, which I know you're a reader. I borrowed books from you, but not the book you're reading now or the flavor of the month. But if I'm in my doldrums, dude, I'm just not feeling it. You know, Fergie, read this book. What is it? The one thing. Yeah. I think the one that has impacted me the most gary uh, keller yep yeah yep. love it love Great. it love it so physically because you're not that old you're early 30s so but physically if you could stay one age the rest of your life but still continue to learn and level up stay physically one age the rest of your life what would it be honestly it'd be right now 33 this year Dude, i say 32 so that's, that's yeah. you better say right now yeah, what right? i can't stand is the people that are 55 and be like right now bullshit dude yeah, you go yeah. back to 32 in a heartbeat if you can stay yeah. that age yeah it's, it's beautiful. i like the number i like the tray tray unfortunately i'm losing it in uh, a couple <laughs> weeks. but uh yeah, <laughs> 33 was good it yeah was a good year body felt good you're coming uh, up in october on another one aren't you it. Are you coming up on another yeah, one in October? First. Yeah, yeah, nice, man. So what's your favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time and or money to? Uh, furry Friends. Furry Friends, nice. They're in Jupiter. They're fantastic. I love their new building, man. That, that's fantastic there that they have over there. That's a yeah, lot better than being in that parking lot, you know? Awesome. It's yeah, they've done quite well. Yeah. So last question. What is – the best decade of music, 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? 
I wouldn't be a good 80s baby if I didn't pick the 90s. <laughs> there that's you go. Know, that's Dude. when that's when I was, you know, old enough to actually start listening to music and Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm 80s, 90s. You know, yeah. I mean, like 90s you had, you know, coming out of the hair bands into the grunge and you had the kind of Blink 182s and, you know, um yeah, the fantastic music, man. Good stuff. So, Steve, how can we find you, brother? I uh, I I'm just about everywhere. I'm not as active on social media these days, but you know, in the works of picking it back up. So Instagram, you know, you can find me. Facebook is a, probably the easier place to find me and communicate. Sure. Uh, gotcha. I'm and, happy to connect and meet new people and you know, to yeah. be a resource in any way. It doesn't have to be mortgagism. Yeah. Like to help people however I can. Love it. And he's also dynamiclendingteam.com, right? That's where Correct. they can find you. Beautiful, man. So Stevie, leave us with one last knowledge nugget that you want us to take with us, internalize, and take action on. I would say don't be afraid to, to step forward and fail. Love I it. I think things are, things are scary, and especially in today's world, things can be scary. But if you got a dream or you got a vision or you want to give something a shot, I think just don't be afraid to step forward and fail because you can always just try again. I love that. And squad, we got basically a free masterclass from a loan officer. A lot of people are like, why are you bringing a loan officer? And they're, they're local. But the thing is, is Steve has experienced so much in life that really helps him prosper in a very cutthroat industry. I mean, we're in Palm Beach, Florida, and just getting business is not easy. Trust me. But Steve's out there grinding, pushing forward. And he reminded us that those that do push prosper. You know, you say that a good le lender, no matter where you're at in this world, is going to listen intently to your needs. They're going to become an advisor. They're going to tell you what's going to fit best for your needs. They're not just going to pigeonhole you into the program. You know, so if you're working with a lender, ask them, is this the, what loan program is right for me? And then take that advice and go with it. He's going to say that he would ask his younger self maybe to set his ego aside a little bit, um, but that will all come with maturity. Um, he has a, wants to be remembered as someone that had a positive impact on people. He, the, he took the discipline of time blocking when he was at a level, uh, playing at a high college level, the time blocking, and really parlayed that into being a mortgage lender. And he's always on point. He's never late. And he, I think he got that from the discipline of playing uh, high level football. You know, he wants to live life to be the best version of himself. And he wishes that for others, to live the best version of yourself. And don't be afraid to step forward and fail. If you do fail, like running back analogy, if you fail, you get tackled, fought, fail forward. Get up, bite down to that mouthpiece, and just keep grinding and keep moving forward. And that's the epitome of Steve. He just earned another varsity letter from the Time to Shine Today squad. Appreciate ah. you coming on. You level up your health. You level up your wealth. You're humble yet hungry. We're always going to collaborate, I think, for the rest of my working life. So I really appreciate you coming on, Steve. I appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Time to shine, family. You are, you are at the right place. You're listening to the right guy. Uh, my man. Thanks, Stevie. Chat soon. All right, bud.